All right, welcome to another episode of Research from the Kitchen Group. Today I'm uh, super excited to bring you a new paper that is a collaboration with Victor Alves and Fernando Lima at West Virginia University. And in this paper we show a new way to think about solving an inverse problem in process systems engineering that relies on automatic differentiation and an implicit function theorem. So in a, in a nutshell, the problem that we're interested in solving is uh, lots of times we have a forward model that you put in some inputs, some variables, some um, say reaction conditions, and then we have mass balances, energy balances, other kinds of equations that relate it to the output of a process. But a lot of times we really want to know if we want a desired solution in the output space, what's the corresponding inputs that give us that? That's called an inverse problem. And usually we, we solve this in a way that involves nonlinear algebra and that, that can be expensive. And what we show in this uh, paper here is that we can take a, a totally new approach that's possible because of automatic differentiation that is a, uh, a new way of taking, or it's not, it's an old way, but it is newly available in software packages to get differential equations that connect the output to the inputs. And then we just integrate along a path in the output space. So over here is a, a little reactor that we can um, build a model of. We can calculate derivatives, what is D output, D input, and then we can integrate along one of these paths uh, to trace out the corresponding input space. All right, that's the nutshell idea um, that's in there. So let me show you exactly how we go about doing it. So the first thing we use JAX, which is a Python library for automatic differentiation. And this allows us to write a program and then calculate uh, the derivative of the output of a program with respect to some variable in the, in the program. Um, it's free, it's available, it's widely used in machine learning and other libraries could be used like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, in the past, we've done something like this with Julia uh, and there are other things. All right, then we need the implicit formula, implicit derivative formula. And that is given some function f of x comma y equals zero, we need to know how do we calculate the derivative dy dx. And this is implicit because uh, it's, it's assumed that we cannot solve y as a single function of x and just evaluate it, um, but we have to use an implicit uh, derivative for formula. And in vector form that's shown here, this is the gradient of y with respect to x is a negative inverse Jacobian. Um, with respect to gradients of df dy. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, to implement. We calculate the Jacobian by automatic differentiation and we calculate this derivative by automatic differentiation, do the algebra and we get this derivative on the left. And then finally we have this system of derivatives. You can think of it as a different set of differential equations but it's in multiple dimensions. And so we developed a runga kutta path integrator that allows us to integrate in a multi-dimensional space. In, in this uh, work, we only do it in two-dimensional spaces, but it's, uh, ex it's extendable to higher dimensions. Okay, enough math. Let's look at what we actually um, worked out. I'll show two examples. This one is a CSTR, and uh, the feature here is that the model is purely algebraic. It's a nonlinear algebraic set of equations, but we have two reactions, A goes to B, that's second order, A goes to C, that's first order. We can vary, um, say, the radius and the operating temperature, and the radius affects the volume of the CSTR, and the temperature affects the kinetics through the Arrhenius equation. And so this figure on the top with the colors shows the input space and how it maps to an output space. So as we vary the radius and then we vary the temperature, you can see that um, we get this colored range in terms of solution that maps nonlinearly to the right. And if we want to be in this uh, circle on the right, the black circle uh, represents, say, a desired output space. Then we have on the left the nonlinear transformed region of input space that corresponds to it. Now this was on the top calculated by, you could say, brute force, where we just calculate every point on on the left and the right, and then figure out which ones fall in this region. On the bottom, you can see the result from path integration. 
And what happens there is we start at a point, we know what the derivatives are, and we integrate our way along the circular path, and that automatically traces out the corresponding path over here. So if I start down here in red, that maps up here in red, and as you go around, you see the change. And we can do this um, much, much faster because we only have to calculate along this path. All right, the second example is a little bit more challenging. This one is a system of coupled differential equations. They're all ordinary, but what we do is have a, a tube shell reactor where hydrogen can permeate across and methane goes in and we get different products, benzene and hydrogen coming out. So to solve this one, we have to numerically integrate from the beginning of the reactor to the end. And that means when we calculate the derivative of the output, your derivatives have to go backwards through that integration. And automatic differentiation has no trouble uh, with this. The, even though these are um, complicated looking equations, we just write a forward model that solves forward, take the derivatives going back, and you can see over here on the right, again, we trace out a circle in the desired output space and map it onto a corresponding input space. And we get exactly the same solution as we would have gotten from using uh, nonlinear programming approaches, but our new path integration method is, is 2 to 20 times faster than that, depending on the details of your NLP setup. Okay, how sensitive is the input to the output? That's also kind of interesting. Um, we actually get directly derivatives, and so we can look across the whole uh, path. Where are the derivatives large? Where are they small? and we can see how they compare uh, in the different dimensions. And so you can see there are some regions where it's not sensitive at all, and then there are other regions where the input is very sensitive to uh, those changes. So that's kind of like a sensitivity analysis of how much will the output change by um, changing the inputs. All right, so in summary, automatic differentiation is uh, continues to be a paradigm shift in scientific programming. It is underlying all of machine learning today, but we can do many, many other things with it, including solving problems in new and better ways than we had in the past. Here, uh, it makes the conventional approach better by a factor of 10. So if we just use automatic differentiation with um, nonlinear programming to provide derivatives, it's already 10 times better than not using them at all. And if we change the algorithm to our path integration, it's even two times better than that through, through a new algorithm. So path integration looks like uh, a new approach to mapping output space to input space, effectively providing a new way to think about solving these inverse problems by starting at a point you know and integrating to a point you want to be. Should be really interesting, and stay tuned to see where this goes in the future. Thanks uh, so much to my collaborators, uh, Victor and, and Fernando. They did um, just amazing work putting this uh, together and really expanding the idea from, uh, from the initial proof of concept into this uh, beautiful result that, that we put together. All right, thanks for listening. And